Just uh, five candidates left to qualify for tonight's GOP presidential primary debate in Miami. Well, six, but Trump's not going to be there. So five will be on the stage tonight. And it's uh, coinciding, of course, uh, Kevin, Donald Trump. He's got a strategic retreat from the debate stage. Uh, pretty confident about his uh, chances against what he calls his less popular ri- rivals. The question is going to be, which one of these five who will be on the debate stage tonight is going to stand out enough to cause others to reconsider their chances and maybe decide, hey, listen, I'll be doing the party better by just dropping out. And the answer is the moderators, Lester Holt, Kristen Welker. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's just going to stand out. So, yeah. you know, I, right. it was, now it is. It'll be interesting to see if the moderators uh, uh, make this about them tonight or not, or if they leave the stage. It's going to be very dramatic. You have everything that's going on mm-hmm. in Gaza, and uh, you know, uh, it, it's going to be. This is going to be. This is going to be a debate worth watching. Now, let's bring in Professor Dave Dulio, director of the Center for Civic Engagement and Political Science, professor at Oakland University. How are you this morning? Guys, thanks for having me. Yeah, I appreciate you being here. Do you, do you think there's going to be a, a a a strong, heavy focus on uh, Israel and Palestine and Gaza and what's going on? I think that foreign policy is going to take up uh, much more of the time in this debate than it than it would in other circumstances, right? And I think that not only um, is the the war in Israel going to be a major point of focus for the candidates, but but also uh, juxtaposing that with the war in Ukraine. I think you'll see both of those topics come up and uh, and, and a lot of time devoted to it. That could be a, a problem for candidates who want to separate themselves and, and, and make a move, because for the most part, they're on the same page. Uh, Ramaswamy uh, made some comments uh, that could be concerning uh, Donald Trump as well, but he won't be there. But but the candidates, for the most part, um, aren't going to be separated much by that issue, are they? I, I don't think so, and I think that that's a, a something that we often see happen in party primaries, right, where you've got these folks that are trying their best to differentiate themselves from their opponents, but you know, at, at the end of the day, they're in this case they're all Republicans, and and there's much more agreement on issues than there than there is disagreement. What do you uh, what do you credit? I guess Nikki Haley's rise in the polls too. Is it her foreign policy experience with her work uh, as ambassador to the United Nations uh, or being a governor of a uh, you know South Carolina, the state like that? Well, what what is it? Do you think that she is allowing her to resonate so much right now uh, with those in the GOP? Well, that's a good question, Tom, and I, you know, I, I'm not sure we really know the answer to that. I think it, she had a pretty strong debate performance in the in the second debate from a few weeks ago, and I think that that's when we started to see more people take notice. Uh, I also think that that we've seen, um, you know, a, a, some candidates drop out. Uh, maybe some of those folks, their second choice, um, or some the folks that supported those candidates that dropped out. Maybe she was their second choice, and they're moving to her now. Uh, I, I think it's 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 all part of the um, you know fluid nature of primaries, with the great exception this time being the the fact that Donald Trump has maintained this stranglehold on the nomination or the the, the precursors to the nomination thus far. You know, uh, Ron DeSantis, he was of course initially the strong number two candidate, but that's turned to wane a little bit with the rise of other of these candidates here, and now he's really focused on. On Iowa, relocating staff to that state is—is is this a risky bet for him to take? And if he doesn't do as well as he thinks he might in the state of Iowa, what, what's next for Ron DeSantis? Well, I think that you know, if, if we look at the DeSantis campaign uh, from its start until now, I, I think that that anybody with a, a fair assessment of it would say that it's been pretty disappointing. That DeSantis was. I think positioned pretty well to to be that main alternative to Trump, and and for whatever reason that hasn't turned out. I think um, you know moving resources to Iowa is um, is is an important step. Uh, I think that he you know he just got the endorsement of the governor in Iowa. We'll see if that makes any difference to the voters in in that state. But you know the the, the early primary and caucus states like Iowa. Uh, they have such an outweighted impact on the end result where, and, and they may not necessarily pick the winner, but, uh, they certainly have, uh, in the past 
narrowed the field. And, and I think that, you know, we, we've seen time and time again candidates that may have uh, trouble meeting expectations or, or doing as well as they wanted in Iowa. They, they do drop out quickly after. I'm, I'm, I'm doubtful that that would be the case with DeSantis, but, but <laughs> you never know. We're talking with Professor David Dulio, Oakland University. I, you know, I'm saddened that uh, Donald Trump has not partake, participated in these debates. Uh, just as a as a citizen, as a, as a voter, I, I want to see everybody up there fighting for the job. Do you think it's hurt him at all? And and is it possible that in that a, a Trump and Bi- or Biden could opt out of debating each other in, in the general? I don't think it's hurt Trump at all. And I think that, in fact, it's it, his strategy has uh, his strategy of avoiding these debates uh, has has shown to be really smart. I mean, you know, he as I said, he's maintained this stranglehold on uh, his position in the polls. Um, it, it, he shows no signs of stopping. And, and there's really no indication that any one of those five that's going to be on the stage tonight can do anything to to knock him off the pedestal. So I think that it's it's absolutely, uh, if not, it's, it's it's absolutely possible, if not likely, yeah. that both Trump and Biden will get their nominations uh, without uh, being on the debate stage. Yeah, it's pretty remarkable, and and these are just the five who are qualifying to be on the debate stage, and there are others in this race too, like Asa Hutchinson, who is not, uh, he didn't qualify. Uh, to be on this is is that kind of the death knell for his campaign? Do you think does he, does he necessarily have to drop out because well, he didn't qualify the, for the debate? Yeah, I mean he doesn't have to, but you'd you'd certainly think that the writing is is on the wall or it's starting to be that wall is starting to be painted uh, because you know if you can't qualify for a debate given the frankly the low hurdles that are that are there for these candidates. Um, you know, how are you going to win the nomination? So I think that, you know, in, in some ways the, the, the RNC is doing itself a favor by, uh, by, by increasing the, the, uh, hurdles, if you will, or the thresholds. And, um, you know, they're narrowing it almost naturally, right? But then we'll see if, uh, like candidates like Hutchinson, uh, actually do follow up and, and say, I'm, you know, I'm out. There's some polling uh, that indicates uh, one on one that a Nikki Haley or a Ron DeSantis could do quite well against Donald Trump. Is there any situation where this could end up with only two candidates in the primary? Uh, well, I, I think that that's what all of these non-Trump candidates are looking for, and I think they're they're jockeying to to be the one who is the Trump alternative. How long it takes for that to happen, if at all, I think is is uh, an, an open question. I think, however, that you know that that polling I think you're referring to is from over the weekend, uh, that New York Times poll that shows DeSantis and Haley doing pretty well against Biden, um, but it also shows Trump really strong, uh, including in, in here in Michigan. And I think that that's that's a big uh, argument that those other candidates are going to have to make against Trump. Um, that that you know he doesn't. If the argument is that he can't get elected, the the polling right now doesn't demonstrate that. Yeah, it doesn't, and that has been in the argument, and that's what they're going to have to, you know, any one of these five on there are going to say why they're the better candidate. And at this point, it looks like Nikki Haley, with her six percent against Joe Biden, or her six percent lead, might be the best qualified to do that tonight. We will find out. But always appreciate your perspective on this and. Uh, Enjoy watching tonight's debate. Professor Dave Dulio, Director of the Center for Civic Engagement and Political Science Professor at Oakland University. Dave, thanks so much. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me, guys. All right. Have a good one. Yeah, I think he's right. I think we're going to see a lot of foreign policy uh, yes. discussion tonight, and I think it'll be very interesting, but I don't think it's going to move the needle for any of these candidates. And, and when the dust settles, we're still going to be talking about Donald Trump and Joe Biden and whoever the mystery Democrat that's going to jump in is. 760 W.